Hey, welcome everyone. Welcome to another time here. Welcome to another time of the book club. Is what we're going to do uh, every Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. West African time. So glad to have you here. So glad you came. Uh, so we'll be, we're studying our new book here. It's a seven featured book. Uh, the Amen Effect. It's a book that's talking about healing broken hearts, healing a broken world, you know, mending broken hearts, broken relationships. And as I read, as I read uh, chapter two during the week, you know, it kind of just feels like just the right fit to come after the last book we, we looked at, which is The Good Life, talking about the importance of relationship. It just fits right well, talking about building on what we had uh, spent a whole year doing, you know, talking about how to heal broken hearts, you know, how to reach out to people. You know, that's one thing I took away from chapter one as we read through chapter one. It's, you know, uh, soaring with those that sorrow and rejoicing with those that rejoice. You know, it's a spiritual mandate. It's a moral mandate. You know, it's a mandate of love. Yeah, and it, it makes a lot of difference. It makes us whole being, whole beings. <laughs> you know, that's the way, that's the result I'm getting in my life. I hope you see it that way also. But there's a there's a there's a wisdom, there's an ancient wisdom in rejoicing with those that rejoice and sorrowing with those that sorrow. There's power packed in that wisdom. There's power packed in that mandate. You know, there's a healing that that gives to you as a person when you do that. When you're able to step out of your comfort zone and rejoice with those that are rejoicing in respect of where you find yourself, not being given to comparing yourself to them, but giving them that moment and rejoicing with them, rejoicing with them. Like I, like I emphasized last week, your rejoicing is also a prayer that to attract even such blessing in your own life. You make that moment theirs and your own moment will come. There's a there's a joy, there's a there's a healing, there's a power that comes also with sorrowing with other people. It it, it, it's, it it makes us human. It makes us human, you know, to be there with other people to to help lift their body, to 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 be a helping hand, you know, to 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 be a shoulder they can lean on, you know. They, it makes a lot of difference, you know. And today we're going into chapter two. You know, and we're going to build on that, building you know, on what we, we looked at in chapter one, you know, and, and we're just going to talk about the importance of, of being a help, being that shoulder, just just building more what we, we talked about, you know, still, still talking about um, sorrow with those that sorrow, rejoicing with those that rejoice, and we're going to build on the importance of it and how we can prepare ourselves for that. You know, so that's what we're going to be looking at in chapter two. The title of chapter two is Please Hold On, Don't Give Up. Hold on, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Hold on, don't give up. You know, hold on, don't give up. Right. And, 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 and we should do, we should then meet such people as a community and as individuals also. Anyway, so I'm going to bring up my slide like I always do, and we're going to take this session. So welcome, welcome once again. You know, we're, we're looking again at the Amen Effect. It's our seventh book in our in our book series. And I'm here trying to go to the next slide here. Uh, all right, my course is all right. And I'm probably going to have to read this also. And, you know, the, the, there is a quote that pretty much runs through the, the whole chapter. It's a, it's a quote by Rumi. And Rumi uh, has this quote, talks about love. You know, he says that every moment, every moment, over every moment, the voice of love is coming from left and right. Every moment, the voice of love is coming from left and right. And what Rumi goes on to say is that all we have to do is to know how to listen to the voice of love. The voice of love is coming from left and right every moment. It's our duty to learn how to to listen to that voice of love as it comes every moment, you know? So, and I think it's it's a dual requirement, right, for us. 
uh, it's up to each of us to be able to listen for that love, you know, and it's also for, for us to be able to give it also, you know, cost the flow of love to, to, to be continual in our community, you know, to, to our neighbors, you know, but, but it's love from God all, all the time also, because sometimes some of the reasons why we're broken is because we're full of self pity. Oh, uh, why me, you know, and we'll, we'll be tied me and all of that. A lot, a lot more hearts will be, will be healed if only we can get to love ourselves, get to love our own self, get to spend time with ourselves, you know, and love, appreciate and accept ourselves. You know, and that's what I see, you know, in this days of me going through this season of life. The more I spend time with myself and I'm at home with myself, it's easier for me to love other people, easier for me to share that same peace with other people. You know, let's go back to, to, to our lesson for today. You know, so Rumi's quote is what guides us through this whole chapter is every moment the voice of love is coming, you know, from left and right, right? And it's up to us also to be that a part of bringing that voice of love to people also, even as we less learn to listen to it ourselves. Let's learn to be a part of those contributing that voice of love, you know, to our ecosystem. You know, the book goes on and says darkness can be inconveniencing. It could be frightening, even dangerous. <laughs> I know what that is. I know what that is. Having been through depression um, two times, you know, I know what it looks like. You know, I want to talk about darkness here where it's both a physical darkness and also a, 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 a psychological darkness. There's also a spiritual darkness, right? All three will give you the same effect and all three flow one into the other. You know, as children, we, we, we fear darkness, you know, one growing up uh, watching those horror movies, you know, and when it's dark, you're just imagining several things. Light comes and, and takes all of that away because everything is in clear view. But in, in a dark place, you your imagination runs runs wild, you know. But there's a darkness that comes upon you when you 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 you're not sure of yourself, you know. And, and there's probably no no better time uh, that I've had that you know come over my life than uh, uh, in about two thousand and eight, you know. And and I, I I I lost something. I made a decision that that cost me a lot of things, you know. And and I I, I lost faith in myself. I lost confidence in myself. I was pretty much saying, why did this happen to me? How could this have happened to me? You know. And I said, ah. I I I I said I didn't want to. I I stopped trusting myself. But I did that so much that I entered into a dark place. A dark place, you know. So even during the day, I couldn't stay alone in a place, in a room. You know, everything felt so dark. Everything felt, thing felt so empty. I felt so alone, you know. And 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 that put me in a place of depression for two years, you know. And uh, so so there is darkness. Is, is frightening. Darkness is is in analogous in a sense, you know, to the devil, to 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 something that is bad, to hell, something that is that does not have life inside of it, and and, and it comes upon us, you know, other than the physical one, you know, it, it, psychologically when we we lose faith. When we lose hope, a lack of hope is a is is a lack of light because hope itself is synonymous to light. Hope gives us light. You know, when you say there's light at the end of a tunnel, what you are saying is that there's hope in front of you. There's hope somewhere in your path, in somewhere in your future. You know, so hope is is an analogous word for light. Where there's no hope. There's no light. There's darkness. You know, so darkness itself, whether it be physical darkness, whether it be psychological darkness, whether it be spiritual darkness, you know, could be inconveniencing. You know, it, it, it could be frightening and even could be dangerous. You know, I've had to drive in thick darkness before. You know, years ago I was driving back from Jasper. Jasper, Texas, East Texas, going back to Houston and driving through the woods, through the forest, you know, in, in some, some of those parts, there's no street light, it's deep darkness, you know, driving that at night. And and, and I, 
I, I had to drive it by feet because I was seeing nothing because there was no other car there. I was just the only one. It was just thick darkness, you know, and, and you have to drive through those spots by faith. You just have to believe there's a road in front of you. You have to believe that there's no porthole, there's no danger in front of you, you know, and you drive through that with, with faith, you know, with hope. So I assume that I'm driving through that and I don't have hope, I don't have faith. I will not be able to move forward. Because everything frightening might, might come in front of me. Oh, what if there's a portal? What if the road heads? What if the road head leads to a river? You know, different things, you know, could come when you don't have the light, you know, it, it to, uh, in front of you, you know. So that is talking about darkness. And, and again, it, it could be darkness, physical darkness in itself is frightening. You know, it could be psychological darkness when there's no, there's a lack of faith, there's a lack of hope. Uh, you know, and that can that can come to us due to a disappointment of life, due to you know, Bible says that hope defied make it makes the heart sick, you know, and it could bring like a form of darkness upon the person, you know, and, and it could it could break that person's heart, you know, and you might just be scared of moving forward, you know. Another thing in scripture that talks about that for us is uh, Psalm twenty three, you know, and uh, David was saying. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I walk through a path that is dark, that is bleak, uh, you know, he's telling us that that, that, that path is something that's supposed to make you scared. Something that's supposed to make you, make you, make you, make you, make you afraid, you know, not sure of yourself. But he, he's saying that the only thing that carries him through or carries you through such time, you know, is the rod and the staff of God, of the shepherd. You know, when you don't know your way, you know, you are, you are depending on the protection and the guidance of, of, the, of, of, of the shepherd. And that just a bit talks about even the season of life that I'm in right now. You know, there are some things that are, that are not too sure in my life. You know, um, don't let me go too personal, but there are things that I, I am not certain. There are things I'm believing God for. There are things I'm expecting, and there are things that are very important. They're pivotal to my life, you know, but I've refused for such things to hold me captive. You know, these are the same kind of things that have taken me to depression in time past, you know. So, <laughs> uh, fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me, right? So if, if those same things have taken me to depression, I ought to have learned from that. You know, one thing I've learned from the passage of life is the fact that the scriptures, the ancient wisdom is true when it tells us that um that by, by worrying, you're not gonna you're not gonna grow, you're not gonna make a difference by worrying. By worrying, you're not gonna grow taller, you're not gonna get what you're looking for by worrying. So why 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 worry when it's not going to make a difference for you? You know, I've wasted four years of my life worrying. You know, I did not move the needle. I had to fight my way out. You know, even though the circumstances of life did not change, I changed. I became bigger than the trouble I was facing. You know, such that I trumped the trouble. I was bigger than it, even though it has not changed. I could live triumphing over it, right? But but some, but one of the things, the things that carry you through that is because you are believing in something or someone that is bigger than you. You are believing that though you don't know, there's something, there's someone that knows and he cares, right? He cares, he cares. 